It's fast, it's racing, and possibly even Neo. It's fast racing Neo on Wii U. This is John from Digital Foundry, and today I have a performance analysis and some thoughts on the game. With this futuristic racer, developer Shinen demonstrates its prowess with some of the most impressive visuals we've seen on Nintendo's console to date. It's an example of old school graphics programming at its finest, where smart optimizations and clever tricks come together to produce remarkable results. That begins with its file size. Fast Racing Neo weighs in at just 556 megabytes. Considering Shinen's roots in the demo scene, this comes as no surprise, but in the days of 10 gigabyte patches, it's a refreshing change of pace nonetheless. Of course, the small file size does come with some caveats. The presentation wrapped around the game, including its menu system, is rather bare bones, lacking even a basic options menu. Yet this too feels like a nice throwback to simpler times before developer logos and intro movies got between you and the action. Once in the game, however, one thing becomes immediately clear. This game is fast. As you can see here, we're looking at a silky smooth 60 frames per second update. Across its 16 tracks, Fast Racing Neo manages to hold this level of performance on a very consistent basis. When combined with the high speed of the game and the excellent motion blur, well, it all comes together very nicely. Performance is not completely stable across the board, however. There are certain areas and specific tracks which exhibit frame rate drops, as you can see here. It's not a huge drop, mind you, but it does stick out in an otherwise buttery smooth experience. We see the same thing here to a lesser extent. That said, we've played through each of the 16 tracks now and can confirm that only two or three of these tracks actually suffer from any slowdown at all. Overall, it's very smooth indeed. Now split screen is another story. In two player split screen mode, we see the same 60 frames per second target, but slowdown becomes a slightly more common occurrence. Trouble spots in single player incur a greater performance hit as you'd expect. It's still a great addition to the package though. Unfortunately, we were not able to test the 4 player split screen mode due to the lack of available players, but we do know that this mode drops from 60 to 30 frames per second. This begs the question then, with visuals and performance of this quality, just how did Shinen manage to pull this off? Well, with clever programming and smart design. But part of smart design comes from knowing when to make a compromise. One such compromise stems from the rendering resolution of the game. While the final frame buffer is a full 720p, the effects and render targets are all rendered at variable resolutions. So what does this mean for the player? Well, based on our pixel counts, we're looking at a resolution of 640 by 720 It would appear that there is some sort of temporal reconstruction in play, but the end result is noticeably pixelated even at high speeds. The most noticeable issue is the appearance of combing artifacts. Essentially, it gives the impression of vertical interlacing artifacts across the screen, and it's visible around the edges of fast-moving objects. There's also a general instability to the image, noticeable when standing still. In this instance, you can actually see some light flickering in this area, reminiscent of a field-rendered PlayStation 2 title. Fortunately, sitting still is not likely to be something you'll be doing in the game. Fast Racing Neo also lacks anti-aliasing of any kind, during development, FXAA was tested with the game, but at these resolutions, the end results were simply too blurry in motion. For a fast-paced arcade-style game, the sharper pixels actually produce a more pleasing overall result. The low-resolution look of the game can be distracting at points while playing, but the volume of post-processing effects and the high speed help obfuscate the issue. On the flip side, we do at least see a decent level of anisotropic filtering in the mix, which is not all that common on the Wii U. So while image quality may fall short of expectations, the rest of the package far exceeds them. Features such as motion blur, ambient occlusion, physically based rendering, HDR lighting, and high quality shadows are expected on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but seeing each of these in use on the Wii U at 60fps is an impressive feat indeed. Fast Racing Neo is one of the only examples of physically based rendering in a shipping title on similarly powerful hardware, so it's quite a treat to see here.
High dynamic range lighting is also rendered using a gamma correct pipeline, which is key to ensuring that both inputs and outputs of a particular shader are in the proper color space, producing more accurate results. We see a lot of clever programming tricks used throughout many facets of the game as well. The mountain passes in this area, for instance, were created by scanning real-world materials and adapting those results into the game. The thick forests evident in the snowy mountain stage are placed using a procedural algorithm, while the excellent non-repeating ground textures are actually generated on the fly using a specialized shader. The results look great and less storage space is required. This also applies to shadow maps, which are generated during level loading. The world shadows generated by the sunlight actually use high quality exponential shadow maps which produce a soft look that blends well with the high speed of the game. Moving elements, such as the player's ship however, require more dynamic shadows. These are generated using shadow volumes projected into the ambient occlusion buffer. This was done in order to work around shadow visibility issues in shadowed regions of the tracks. We also see a whole host of screen space effects such as light shafts in nearly every stage, as well as screen glare when light plays off of the camera. Ultimately, we have a very impressive looking racer here with a blistering frame rate and beautiful visual design. While playing the game, the whole package comes together brilliantly, but if you look too closely, you can certainly spot some of its limitations. Most noticeably, the low resolution sticks out as a minor blemish on an otherwise great package. Yet taken as a whole, Fast Racing Neo feels like a wonderful throwback to arcade racing games of yesteryear with a fresh coat of paint on top, of course. This really feels like the type of game you might have thrown into your Dreamcast back in the day. Anyways, that about wraps things up here. Be sure to check out the rest of our content on YouTube and, of course, the full article over on the site. And until next time, this is John, signing off.